In this video I'm going to show you how to use a one sample t-test to compare uh, two means when we have a paired uh, sample uh, set up. So uh, the data that we're going to use, I'm just going to load it and then I'm just going to reformat it slightly so that we can look at the picture of the data. So here's, here's a picture of the data and what it represents is the immunocompetence of 13 red-winged blackbirds before and after testosterone implants. And what we're interested in is uh, whether there's uh, a change in the, the mean uh, of the before measurements and the after measurements. And so in this, in this plot here, um, each of the, of the blackbirds is represented by two two points that are joined up by a line. <clears throat> so for this blackbird, the immunocompetence was was down here, like at around 3.9 before the implant treatment, and then it was up here at what, like 4.3 maybe uh, after the treatment. And then this, this one, uh, there wasn't much change. Uh, this one went down and, and so on. So what we're trying to figure out is overall, uh, was there a change um, between the before and after um, measurements. So, um, I mentioned that uh, at the beginning, in the introduction, that we could use a one-sample t-test to do this. Um, and the one-sample t-test was uh, the hypothesis test that we covered in the last video. So, um, to to implement that test in this context, uh, we, we need to do an extra step in between. Because if you think about it, we've got two measurements here. We've got the before measurements and the after measurements. So I could, I could show you what those are. So uh, actually let's show the before measurements first. So here's the before measurements and here's the after measurements. Okay, and this 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 is a paired setup because each of the two points corresponds to the same blackbird. Okay, in the next video we're going to also look at a, uh, an example where we've got two groups, um, but in that case we're going to have we're not going to have a paired setup because the two groups represent independent samples. Um, but in this case, we have we have a paired data set up, and so you have to treat the two different situations differently. Uh, and it turns out that this setup, the paired setup, is very easy to treat because we can we can apply uh, the the one sample t-test to analyze the differences. So to analyze those differences, we need to calculate the differences. So that's what I'm doing here is I'm creating a new variable d which represents the after measurement minus the before measurement. Okay, so for example, if I if I look at that variable, uh, we can see that it's um, after minus before. So 4.44 minus 4.65 comes to minus 0.21. So for blackbird number one, uh, that was the difference, the after measurement minus the before measurement. And for blackbird number two, the after measurement was 4.3 and the before measurement was 3.91, so the difference is 0.39. Okay, so if there was no difference, if the implant is having no impact on the uh, immunocompetence measurements on average, then we would expect the mean of these differences to be zero. So that's going to be my um, null hypothesis, is that the population mean difference of the before measurements and the after measurements is zero. Okay, so we're doing a, a hypothesis test here, and uh, first step is to state the null and the alternative hypotheses. Null hypothesis in this case is that 
the uh, the difference, the the population mean difference um, is zero. Um, so if, if I put that in this particular context, uh, the mean change in antibody production after testosterone implants was zero. That's the null hypothesis. And the alternative hypothesis is that the mean change in antibody production after testosterone implants was not zero. So we're, we're doing a two-tailed test here. Okay, so uh, let's figure out all the different pieces I need. So I'm doing this in a slightly different order to, to how I've done it in the, in the tutorial here. Um, so I'm just going to calculate my sample statistics. Okay, and I'm, I'm calculating my sample statistics based on this new variable that I just created, representing the differences in the measurements, in the paired measurements. So I've got my sample mean, my sample st standard deviation, there's my sample size, got 13 blackbirds. Calculate my standard error, that's the sample standard deviation divided by the square root of n. Uh, the degrees of freedom is n minus 1, so 12. And then uh, my significance level for my test is going to be alpha of 0 0.05. Okay, so to calculate the, so uh, I'm on step two at the moment, I'm trying to figure out the test statistic. So this test statistic formula is given here, sample mean minus null hypothesis mean divided by the standard error. So I can I can calculate that. My, my null hypothesis mean in this case is zero. Okay, and what do I get? I get 1.271409. And then I went through this in a, in a fair bit of detail in the last video, so I'm not going to dwell on it here, but this is the, the code that we need to enter to calculate the p-value, the two-tailed p-value. So if I run that, I get a two-tailed p-value of 0.2276739. Okay, so that's step three. And uh, step four is to make a decision, draw a conclusion. Decision rule, always the same. Reject the null if in favor of the alternative, if the p-value is less than the significance level. Otherwise, we cannot reject the null hypothesis. In this case, uh, a p-value, our p-value here is bigger than 0 0.05, so we cannot reject the null hypothesis in this case. Okay, so, uh, the, the data uh, are telling us that uh, there's no significant difference um, in the before measurements and the after, after measurements. Um, so, so we're unable to reject the null hypothesis that the testosterone has no effect on immunocompetence. Uh, the other thing we might want to do here is look at a confidence interval. Actually, just before I do that, though, uh, if you don't, if you if you're happy with uh, how this all works now, and you don't feel the need to go through all these calculations step by step, you can jump straight to using the t dot test function, and a single line of code will give you the same results as our test statistic, degrees of freedom, p value. Um, we can also calculate a confidence interval here, um, which is which is often a good idea. And so again, we can we can calculate that by hand. Ooh, why am I getting different numbers there? Uh, I know it's because I didn't calculate my critical value yet. Okay, <laughs> so I'm using the critical value left over from the last video. So I, I better make sure I calculate the critical value before I do my calculations and now I'm getting the same numbers. Okay, that's good. So we're 95% confident that the, the uh, population mean difference is between minus 0 0.04 and 0.15. So, uh, so we can see that zero is in that interval. And so that's why we were unable to reject the null hypothesis in this case. Or we can look at our uh, t dot test function output, and we can see the confidence interval right here. 
Okay. Uh, it turns out there's a there's another way that we can do this in R. And remember, kind of at the beginning of this whole analysis, uh, we had to make a new variable, which represented the after measurements minus the before measurements. And uh, if we don't want to to go to the trouble of doing this, we can actually use use the original data. Um, using this function here, okay. So, so again, it's the t dot test function, uh, but the way we're using it is slightly differently. It's slightly different because I'm putting two variables in here. Here's one variable, and here's the second variable. Okay. Whereas before, when we used the t dot test function, we were doing a a, a one sample t test, so we only had one variable. Um, but we can apply that same test, putting two variables in here, um, and we just make sure that this argument here is set to true. Okay, if I just look at the help function for t.test, we can see that this argument here is, it says it's a logical indicating whether you want a paired t.test. Okay, in this case we do. Uh, in the next video, we'll actually do uh, a test where we've got two two variables in in the in the function arguments, um, but we'll set paired equals false because in the next video we're going to consider a different type of experiment where we've got two independent samples that we're comparing. But in this case, we have a paired setup where. Uh, the two measurements are made on the same experimental unit, in this case blackbirds. So we have a paired setup, so that's why we have to set paired equals true here. So if we run that, oops, we get, uh, we get the same results. There's the test statistic, degrees of freedom, p-value, and there's a confidence interval there. Okay, so that's how to uh, do a, a paired t-test um, in R.